All right, it's time to hear from a coach, Derek Schooley. One of the top defensemen of his era, when he was growing up here in St. Louis, his game would eventually take him to the USHL, where he was a second team all-league performer after leading the league in scoring for defensemen, as well as helping his Omaha Lancers team capture the Anderson and Clark Cup titles. He'd go on to play four years at Western Michigan University. He's a teammate of longtime St. Louis Blue Jamal Mayers, but Schooley is probably best known for what he's done at Robert Morris University, where he's entering his 20th season as their head coach. He's enjoyed tremendous success there as well. It includes Atlantic Hockey Conference titles, as well as an NCAA berth back in 2014. Joining his father, Rick, as a member of the St. Louis Amateur Hockey Hall of Fame, please welcome Derek Schooley. Thank you. Well, I'm used to press conferences. I don't do, I don't know what to do with my hands. I, I, I'm a press conference guy to where you can ask me questions. So if anybody has anything in the middle, raise their hand. Um, I'll try to answer it. Uh, if it's too hard, it's a no comment. If it's really a dumb question, I'll say, what are you talking about? I had a student uh, reporter once ask me, uh, why'd you pull your goalie down by one with a minute left in the game? And I thought it was a trap, and they were serious. I went, next question, please. So if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. Um, congratulations to the other nominees. Um, grown up watching them play, and uh, they're all well-deserving, and congratulations. I um, want to thank the Hall of Fame committee for judging me worthy of this honor. I will say it, announcing it at our celebrity game last year in front of 2,000 people was a bit much. The uh, on the bench guys, everybody know that guy with the cowboy hat and the other guy with the Jofa? One guy came up and said, don't worry, you're still a bender. So uh, that was a, a little humbling. Um, th thanks to Scott Rupp for organizing this, this night, especially limiting him to six minutes. So thank you, Scott. Uh, being in hockey, you know uh, incredible sacrifice it takes to be a hockey parent sibling or player, and uh, I'd like to take some time to recognize some important people. My family's been so supportive to me so much, uh, been my rock, but uh, they decided not to come. So, uh, uh, I don't get it, but uh, seriously though, uh, my wife, Alicia, I moved her from, she told me when we married that uh, she wouldn't move two hours away from home. Um, I moved her from Michigan to Chicago, to Ithaca, New York, to Colorado Springs, to Pittsburgh. Um, couldn't do it without her. She is the one that keeps her house moving in the right direction. She ran track in college, coached basketball, but now she's a hockey mom. She actually manages two teams, a U16 girls AAA team and a U18 boys AAA team. So we couldn't do it without her, and right now she's driving back from uh, games in Bowling Green, so uh, we couldn't do it without her. Um, my oldest, Caitlin, who's going to be a 20-year-old freshman at Robert Morris, um, she's kind of like me as a hockey player, a little bit of a late bloomer. She wants to be a coach like her dad. I keep telling her to coach football or basketball because they would make a lot more money. But she wants to, she wants to coach hockey. My son, Brendan, it's spelled B-R-E-N-D-A-N. Okay, so he came when my dad was inducted and they had up on the board it was spelled with, uh, instead of D-A-N, it was spelled D-O-A-N. It was Brendone. So, as hockey players do, we've shortened that to Doan, and that's his nickname now. So uh, a mess up at the old place has now uh, uh, brought my son a new nickname. Uh, my youngest, Taylor, she was uh, the only one to wear my number, uh, number 24. She wanted to be goalie. I don't know why. I mean, really. No disrespect, Mike McKenna or Steve Cash, but uh, so I shot mini stick balls at her head, and she changed her mind really quick. It wasn't a brother, it was dad. Um, but she's the one that wanted to be here the most. She would probably be holding court right now, and uh, she had uh, paintball today. Uh, once again, I really fall far down the tree when paintball's over this. Um, they've all turned out to be really smart, competitive, very good hockey players. I'm proud of the people they've become, and I'm proud of the family we've become. Um, wish they could be here, but hockey always takes precedence. Uh, family that's here, thank you to my cousin Brett and my Aunt Kim. Uh, most of all, thanks to my parents for allowing me to play this great sport. Always still ask about my team, um, my recruiting, and what's going on with hockey. Uh, thank you to my dad, uh, pushing me to be the best player, the person I could be. I must have learned a lot watching him play for Bartolino's at 12 p.m. at Immerfrost 
when I was four. I mean, put me to bed, put me to bed. <laughs> Thank you to my mom for being there every day and helping me grow into the person I am today. She started at Schnucks, worked her way up from a check, checker all the way to the main office as an auditor. I didn't get my hockey playing ability from her though. Last time she skated was at Clayton and uh, she took one step on the ice and broke her wrist. So she hasn't been back since she retired. But I owe them everything. Um, I wouldn't be here without them. Um, but especially at 13, I wanted to quit hockey. Um, I wanted to go, go to public skating on Friday night at Brentwood, and they told me no. So my, as a 13-year-old, what do you do? Okay, I'm going to quit hockey then. Doesn't make any sense until they pulled out their charge card bills and said, sure, go right ahead. We'll have a lot more money to do other things. So they didn't allow me to quit hockey when I was 13, and I wouldn't be here without them. Um, I played for many organizations growing up. Uh, in college and pros, I'd name all the pro teams, and once again, Scott said I only had six minutes. Um, I, go, I guess nowadays I'd be called a jersey collector. Uh, thank you to Cornell, Air Force, and Robert Morris for believing me to coach their teams and mold their student athletes. Thank you for all the staff members that gave me every ounce of energy to help build successful programs. Thanks to all my players who have played for me. Hopefully I've affected their lives in a, a positive manner. Um, I always feel, I go speak at coaches clinics and um, I always feel like I get, uh, I, I ask a question, I say, I've got the second best job in hockey. And I'll, I'll say to all the coaches that are out there and they'll say, who, what's the first? And the guy will raise his hand and will say, coach in the NHL? No. What is it? Head coach of an orphanage. Think about it. No parents to deal with. <laughs> so. So, I'd like to thank all the coaches and players I played for, especially the ones in the Hall of Fame. There's a lot of you out there. I couldn't have done it without uh, having great teammates and great coaches here in St. Louis. Um, I'm very fortunate to be around. They all contributed to my success. You're only as good as your teammates and coaches, so thank you. A special thank you to my college coach, Bill Wilkinson at Western Mission, who gave me an opportunity to play college hockey when not many others would. I guess 147 games later, it worked out for both of us. Uh, thank you to my junior coach, Frank Serratori, who I played junior hockey for in Omaha. Frank gave me my first job at Air Force, um, a full-time job. The first one was a volunteer, so I, then I go back to telling my daughter, you don't make any money coaching hockey, so coach basketball. Um, but I'm proud to call him my coach, my friend, and my mentor. Hockey's a game of life lessons, and I believe the game has taught me so much and continues to teach me every day. A lot has happened to me since I left St. Louis. When I look back in the last 37 years since I left, the main thing I have to acknowledge is just how unbelievably lucky I am and personally been able to see so many of my hockey dreams come true. I've had op the opportunity to play with many of the greatest hockey players and learn from some top coaches in North America. I've been fortunate to receive some nice awards, honors, and recognitions from my teammates, peers, and even the general public except there was another student reporter. I, I'm not really a big fan of student reporters. I went to six straight Final Fours as a coach and uh, went at the CAA tournament, decided after we lost in the finals, uh, it was a league record, by the way, to uh, write a hit piece and say I should be fired. He's not on my list. Uh, any, any of these things would have been, been, been beyond my wildest dreams when I was a little kid here in St. Louis. The fact that they have all come true leaves me waking up every morning feeling fortunate and thankful. Thank you for the committee for thinking of me. Thank you for everybody in attendance. Uh, I will let you know that Robert Morris will be coming to play Lindenwood in 2025. So hopefully we'll come to see everybody there. I appreciate everybody and thank you. Hey, you can blame me for the orphanage joke because he read it to me and he's like, you think that would go over well? I said, dude, that's hilarious. Yeah, absolutely. I, I didn't even know what the hell it meant. But then he explained it, obviously, no, no parents. And you know, Craig Berube gets bad questions too. It's not just you at the college level. Everyone gets bad questions.